Buenas tardes a todos. Bienvenidos y muchas gracias por, por venir. Eh, me llamo Javier Godoy. Para los que no seáis tan habituales de, de estos eventos que hacemos casi siempre los jueves. Eh, y hoy tenemos, además, un invitado un poco especial. Eh, tenemos con nosotros a John, John Tomlinson, Tomlinson. Eh, con eh, una experiencia y con un tema eh, que yo creo que, que nos va a interesar a, a todos mucho, que es cómo manejar el análisis eh, de, imagino que grandes cantidades de información en, en espacios como pueda ser Twitter, para eh, detectar tendencias, para analizar futuras posibles tendencias eh, y eh, bueno, pues poder un poco prever hacia dónde eh, se está moviendo un, un determinado espacio, eh, mercado, eh, categoría de, de empresa, etcétera, etcétera. ¿vale? Eh, agradecemos eh, hoy, eh, además, el que tenemos dos patrocinadores, K School y eh, Sweet Spot, que nos invitan y que os invitan a todos vosotros a que al acabar podamos ir al habitual eh, eh, bar irlandés eh, a tomar todos unas cervezas y que podamos continuar eh, posteriormente ahí con un poco de networking, conocernos un poco mejor también, y que eh, podamos continuar la conversación que aquí surja. ¿vale? Eh, cedo ya eh, la palabra a John. Eh, al finalizar vamos a tener la oportunidad de tener también un turno de preguntas, y como os digo, eh, no acabamos aquí, sino que os invitamos a todos a, a continuar en esa eh, sesión de networking eh, a continuación. ¿vale? John, cuando quieras. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I'll, I'm speaking in English. I hope you noticed. Um, just introduce Angel, Angel Maldonado, who is uh, here with me, who will be helping me with the slides um, today. Can I just start by getting to know you for a second? Just some quick market research. Can you tell me who, who here works in the um, public sector? Anybody work in the public sector? Private sector? Freelance? Anybody freelance? So pretty much everybody private sector, a couple of freelance people. Is everybody, does everybody work in marketing or internet marketing, that kind of thing? Anybody who would describe their job as more IT technical? Is that a yes? Translation. Translation. Okay. So it, was there anybody else that's not something to do with marketing or internet marketing, social media, that kind of thing? Is everybody in that kind of camp? No, no. <laughs> is everybody is, is everybody here on Twitter? I presume is that 100% everybody. Put your hand up if you're not on Twitter. Okay, so everybody here is fairly educated with social media and Twitter and all things like that. Some of this might seem a bit easy then, but uh, at the beginning, we work for Colbinson. Colbinson, we're based in Madrid. We have offices in New York and we have offices in London as well. We focus on that moment when you arrive at a website, the customer experience between making sure the customer meets their objectives arriving at the website and the business meets their objectives of arriving at the website. So from the customer's point of view, that means they find the information or they find the product that they want. From the business's point of view, it means they sell what they want or they give the information or they get the customer satisfaction that they want. That's what we work with. We're an innovative company and we're focusing on um, mainly or the, the thing that we're talking about today is about how we can take advantage of the great opportunity that social media and in particular Twitter, the great advantage that they give us. A lot of us use Twitter just to send messages or share things, share photos. It's a, it's a, a as communication. But we think Twitter, the opportunity it presents us is a lot greater than that. We think Twitter gives us a, an opportunity like this and we're using it somewhere like down here. Some businesses are doing a lot more than that, but most of us are kind of down here when there's this much opportunity. It's a bit like when, when computers and email first came out. I remember a friend of mine, their grandmother got email. And they were saying, this email is fantastic, it's brilliant, it's wonderful. And he, she sent an email to her, my friend. It arrived in the post. He typed the email, printed it off, and sent it in the post. And said, email's fantastic. 
for her, she had seen, she'd seen the old typewriters. You know those old typewriters where you, have, you hurt your finger just pressing a key? To electric typewriters, to getting a computer, to getting email, and she saw that as a linear progression of the same thing. So she was enjoying using email, but she was down here. And what email can give you is up here. And we think we're in a similar place with the social media and, and, and Twitter. And that's kind of the challenge that we've taken on as a company to try and say, this is what we want to try and work out. It will be different for everybody. Depends on your business, how you make use of this. But I hope you find it interesting what we're going to talk about. I hope you understand me. Does everybody understand me OK? Good. You need about a minute, I've been told, to tune in to, to the accent. Because I'm from the north of England. And we speak a bit differently in the north of England. How, how would you say this in English? The, the glass. Yeah, yeah. And a taffa? How would you say taffa? Cup. Cup. Cup and glass, yeah? Yeah, not for me, no. It's glass and cup. <laughs> cup. <laughs> when I first came to Spain, I was teaching English, which for somebody from Leeds is a challenge. Um, and I actually remember seriously being in a class, talking to a five-year-old, arguing with a five-year-old child about how to say cup. And I was saying, it's cup. And he said, no, no, no. Pro Profiti, they cap. That's, it's cup. <laughs> and that's when I realized I had to change my accent so people would understand me. So I, I, I hope you understand me, OK? If you don't, please stop me. It's OK, please stop me. Oh, no, go back. Um, this, is, um, this is actually the best photo there is of me in existence. <laughs> it's just taken by Rothio at the back there. Um, I've got used to not being very good looking. There was a period of time when I was about 16, when I was good looking for about three weeks. Since then I've just looked like shit and I've just got used to it now. <laughs> but, but that is quite a good photo of me, yeah. Um, so this is really what we're kind of talking about today. Twitter, as you all know, Twitter is about what people are saying. It's what they're saying now. It's what they're, what value can that give us in a business sense? What value can we get from the fact that we, we have a way of knowing what people are talking about? And that's the question we're asking. How can we make that valuable to us from a business perspective? This is just a quick slide. This just shows you, this is just a, a quick look at, this is normal people on Twitter, what they actually put in their profiles, the words they put in their profiles. So this is kind of who's on Twitter. You'll see a lot of the words there are sort of a bit emotional. People talking about love, love life, um, people talking about their family, lover, living, or they're describing themselves. There's things like wife, mother, um, husband. The fact that the word wife is a lot bigger than the word husband. <laughs> I don't know who these wives are married to. But also they do say that Twitter is I think 53% female, 47 male. I don't know. But you've got there, you've got also you've got mother and mum. There's no father on there. Interesting. Different approach to Twitter. But that's what normal people are putting in their, in their things. It's essentially about who they are and what they're passionate about. Music, um, artist, writer, that kind of idea. Who they are, what they care about, how they define themselves, yeah? That was normal people, this is marketing people. This is what they put on. You can see the difference immediately. There are some commonalities. There's writing, is, writer is on there, but twice. Writer's up there. Music is on there, but it's much more advertising, professional business. It's much more about relations. It's about that kind of thing. So those are the kind of people that are on Twitter. Just a bit about the growth of Twitter. Most of, most of the growth of Twitter happened in early 2009. Something like nearly 80%, nearly 80% of all the people on Twitter signed up in the first part of 2009. This is... Um, TPS, does everyone know what TPS is? Does anybody know what TPS is? Tweets per second. 
tweets per second. The, the record for number of tweets per second before this graph, this is 2011, before this graph was when Michael Jackson died and it was about 400 or something like that. 400 tweets in one second. And then New Year came four seconds after midnight. That was in Tokyo. Four seconds after midnight, the record jumped from about 400 to nearly 7,000. And as you can see, throughout 2011, this is in chronological order. So throughout 2007, that record was broken several times. I've got a, what's the pointer thing? Can anybody see that? That pointer thing? I can't see that anymore. <laughs> so an optician in the house. Um, it was then, it was, it was not broken, it was almost equaled. Oh, I can't see that. Trust everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> can I? <laughs> but I don't know what I'm pointing at if I can't see it. There, 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 look. Yeah. That's when it got broken. There. Brazil in... That's when Brazil got knocked out of the Copa America. Oh, yeah. That's when it got broken. But it... And straight after that was the highest sporting event ever, uh, ever at the time, which was the, uh, the final of the female, the feminine World Cup female World Cup, women's football. That was the, Germany. sorry? Germany. Was it in Germany? I don't know. I don't know. But that, that was at the time. It's been broken since by last year's Super Bowl, or this year's Super Bowl, I should say, sorry. And then you can see it got broken several more times for the end of the year with the MTV Awards there, briefly, <coughs> there, because in that one, I believe Beyonce announced, is she pregnant or something? I think Beyonce announced something. <laughs> And that, at the time, what broke all the records, which is kind of a bit sad for humanity, I think, that that was the record. You may have noticed the big column at the right-hand side there. I think that's a bit of an, an anomaly. Does anybody know what that was? That was in Japan. Do you, do you know? No, okay. Well, in Japan, they showed a film called Castle in the Sky on the 15th of December. And in one single... Um, Second, there were over 25,000 tweets. I kind of get the feeling that there was a lot of geeks planning that. I don't think that really compares, but that's the, the world record in tweets per second. In terms of sustained tweets over a period of time, actually the record is um, when Osama bin Laden was killed here. It actually didn't peak so high, but it was sustained over a much longer period of time. So that growth of Twitter from 2010, Michael Jackson, five, six hundred tweets to 25,000 tweets. And now every time there's MTV awards, every time there's Oscars, every time there's a big football match or something like that, it's seven, eight, nine thousand tweets every single second. We had that recently with, um, what was it, Rothio? The, the Super Bowl. There was the Super Bowl. Okay. So this is about how people use Twitter. This is a man shouting. Because people use Twitter initially just to communicate, to try and sell stuff, to shout. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing here. I'm communicating. That's how people use Twitter initially, just as another advertising board, the same as the boards you see on the motorway here. Look, here's our brand. Here's us shouting. Then people started using it to listen. That's somebody listening. And they were looking at a more sophisticated way. Can we use Twitter more sophisticated than just shouting our advertising copy, our messages? Can we be more sophisticated? Can we actually start listening to people and then reacting to what they're saying, engaging with them? You all know there's a lot of companies that do this now. Maybe on Twitter it's what, I don't know, one in a hundred or something. It's not many. But there are some good examples of this. Virgin Atlantic, the airline, they have one, it's an automated one, but you just tweet them your flight number and the date and they tell you, tweet back immediately with the status of the flight. Restaurants are getting very good at this, especially in the US. You can tweet what you think of the food as you're cooking it, as, the, as you're eating it, obviously. <laughs> and then they will tweet you back recommendations. If you like this, maybe you'll like that, that kind of thing. Much very personalized way of engaging with the people. So what we call this is the Twitter evolution. This is the idea that we're going, we've moved from communicating where we're just talking and selling, talking and selling. We've moved from that to actually going from communication to participation. We're actually now listening and we're reacting and we're trying to engage with people. 
What we're trying to do in Colbenton is take this to the next level. We think, we think that's about there. Most people are down here. A good kind of reaction thing is about here. We think we can still push it up to here. What are people talking about on Twitter? Well, lots of things, obviously, but what we're interested in from a business point of view, what they're talking about is things like this. 53% of people are talking about products that they like and recommending companies and products in their tweets. Does anybody know how many... It took... It took the, the first billion tweets took three years, two months, and one day to send since Twitter launched. It took three years, two months, one day to send <coughs> one billion tweets. Does anybody know how long it takes to send one billion tweets now? Four days, just over four days. If 53% of them are talking about products, that's a lot of product information out there. And are we using it? 53% talking about it, and half of them are actually going ahead with buying it. So that's a lot. That's a, an enormous amount of data, an enormous amount of information that we can use there. But maybe they're not saying nice things. Well, what we found, when it actually comes to catalog items, products usually, sometimes services, people are overwhelmingly positive. As you can see here, in the US, 80%. In the UK, we're more positive. It's British people, 88% are positive about what we're communicating. So if you get a tweet about a catalog item, a product or a service, nine times out of 10, that, that's a positive mention. So you can fairly easily say, if you're being mentioned on Twitter, that's a fairly good measure of popularity. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good measure of popularity. This isn't true for everything. We've been doing a lot of work, um, or there is a lot of work going on at the moment in, the, in politics. Is anybody following the um, Republican Party primaries in, in, the, in America? Yeah? And you're all keeping a straight face despite <laughs> following that. But a lot of people are looking. There's a, there's a company in Chicago, there's other companies that are trying to find out, can you predict election results by looking at the data of what's been tweeted, looking at numbers of followers, looking at tweets, and looking at things like that. It's much more difficult because you don't have this direct relationship of one tweet roughly being equal to a recommendation. It's a much more difficult and complicated process to say, I'm tweeting about Mitt Romney or Rick Santorum, and yet um, that might not be positive. I could just be making a joke. There's, 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 it, it's a much more complicated process. We'll show you later what we did in, in some Spanish elections, which is, it, it is pretty interesting. There is work you can do there. But it is more complicated with things like politics. I did see one thing the other day where somebody was trying to predict the outcome of the Super Bowl using Twitter. Now, can anybody see the problem with that? Well, the, the Super Bowl doesn't depend on popular support of people. It doesn't depend on my opinion or your opinion. The Super Bowl depends on the people that are playing on the pitch. It's got nothing to do with Twitter. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a positive application of, of this technology. Clearly, who wins an election is exactly to do with what we think. Who buys a product is exactly to do with what we think. Who wins a football match has got nothing to do with what we think. Okay, so moving on from what I was saying before, we said about communication to participation, about here. We're trying to push it up to this level. Does anybody know how, how do you tell if your local fire service Bomberos, how do you know if they're performing well? How do you measure their success? The time they arrive at a fire, that's a, a good idea. Do they put the fire out? How many, <laughs> how many fires do they put out? That kind of measure. Now that's what you think, yeah? But that's not the way you measure a good fire service. In fact, that's the opposite is true. So good fire service should spend their time and focus their resources on preventing fire. If they have to put a fire out, they have failed. A good fire service shouldn't have to put a fire out ever. 
If they can, they should be proactive. They should be educating people. They should be using their knowledge of our lifestyles, their understanding of how fires start and safety to prevent fire. And a good fire service, you should see the number of fires going down. If you have to put out a lot of fires, that's not a successful fire service. The point is, as we get older, get more experienced and trying to get more effective in the way that we work, the more time we can spend being proactive, the more effective we're going to be. The more time we spend fighting fires, the less effective we're going to be. So we think Twitter can be used to take it to the next step, to be proactive. Not to, not to listen and react, but to actually understand, to, and to, to be proactive, to anticipate things. F good fire services anticipate fires. They anticipate there's going to be a fire. They plan for the fact that we're all going to start fires. And they go out there and make a stop. That's how they do it. They anticipate that because they understand how we live. They understand how fires start. They're proactive. And that's what we think is the power of Twitter. Did you want to say something? I know, participation. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Participation plus. You have to take no, no, participation.com domain is available. Okay. <laughs> it's probably taken. Good. <laughs> Very good. So, how do you get anticipation? Well, this is what we reckon is in order to be able to anticipate something, you need knowledge and you need understanding. That's what you need. Um, yep. Take uh, Yep. So, for example, if you had, well, while you're setting that up, so, for example, going back, to the, going back to the primary elections, if you know about the primary people like Mitt Romney, like Rick Santorum, Newt Gingrich, you know about them and you know about the electorate and you understand American politics, you have knowledge, you have understanding, you can make a prediction, can't you? You might not be right, but you can make a prediction. If you've got a thousand tweets and 900 of them are positive about a particular product, you can probably predict that there's going to be an increase in demand. Would you agree? So that's our knowledge and that allows us to predict. So we're going to go through that knowledge plus understanding and how we can use that to anticipate. That's what we're going to talk about now. This is the, we, we were working with La Bosta Galicia. And this was the, the most recent regional elections, not the general elections, the regional elections before. And what we're doing here is we're tracking, you can see across the, the, the you can see across the top. Does anybody see? Oh. You can see across the top the different things: popularity. Where well, you've got the, the regions, Carunia, etc. We'll stick with Carunia just to keep it simple. We've got popularity on the left, which is these. How many times have they been mentioned in tweets? Which is not every single tweet because some users will send out hundreds of tweets. So we do factor that in. Uh, activity. So this is how many how many tweets they are sending how many people are replying to them, how many times they are then replying again, so how active they are. And you can see that huge spike there of Pepe, the day before the election, which I believe is called the Day of Reflection. Pepe were busy tweeting away. Um, and then the, the next one is followers, which because is obviously... The manager was in, on holidays. No, he wasn't reflecting <laughs> that day, no. No, he was tweeting. Um, and this is numbers of followers, which you can see numbers of followers is a, is a, is a much less dynamic measure. Okay? But it's a very, very solid thing because you could have a huge amount of support, but they don't really tweet that much. And you've got to pull all these measures in together to actually make a prediction. Looking at that, who, who feels they could just make a prediction off the top of your head? Not very many, I would imagine. It's not that clear, is it? That's just knowledge. There's no context. There's very little further information there. There's not a lot we can do with that information just as it is. Next one. Yeah. Okay. So how do, we, how do we take that knowledge and turn it into understanding? Okay. The first thing to do is understand the nature of the problem. When you, in maths, they say that if you want to find out the solution to a problem, the first thing you have to do is understand the nature of the problem. So if it's a, a linear problem, you need a linear solution. But if it's a distributed problem, you need a distributed solution. Okay? That's the extent of my maths knowledge. 
And what, what we have with the communications revolution, everyone talks about the communications revolution. Communications many years ago was somebody taking a scroll and to somebody else on foot. They would run or they would walk and they would take a scroll, or they put it in their belt, they wouldn't hold it, but they would take a scroll to a person and they would give them that. That was communication. It was at the, the speed of foot. And then people started using horses. So then it was at the speed of a horse. And then they would drive or trains. And then we had airmail. And then we had email, which is more or less the speed of light. But all the time, the only thing that's changing there is the speed. It's just getting faster and faster and faster. That's all that's changing. It's still linear. It's still one message being passed to another, to another, to another. That's how we think. Twitter isn't like that. Twitter isn't a linear message just being passed faster and faster and faster. Twitter is distributed. It's a completely different thing. It just distributes all over the place. It's like a flock of birds. A flock of birds doesn't have a single bird that's in charge of it, a single boss bird that's telling it, go this way, this way. It doesn't work like that. A flock of birds doesn't work like that. You have one, each bird responds to the birds around it, but there is no control of a flock of birds. There is no one bird that's in control. The climate, you don't see one cloud telling all the, come on, you don't see that because it doesn't happen. And if you want to understand the climate, you can't just go looking at one cloud and then go and look at the next cloud and then go and look at the next. That doesn't tell you anything. The stock market the same. The stock market isn't a linear line of shares. It doesn't work like that. These are distributed systems. There isn't one place in charge. To understand a flock of birds, you've got to look at the flock of birds, not at the individual birds. That's the first part that we need to understand when working out how we can understand um, to turn Twitter knowledge into understanding. Turn Twitter to the other yeah. yeah. Which one's next? So this is the Basque country. This is the live one. This is the Basque country, and this is a live view at the moment of exactly what is being tweeted in the Basque country at the moment. Alpa Athletic is always there at the top. But this is this, down there in, in, in Vitoria as well, Alpa Athletic. Yeah. You must, you must love seeing that Borja as a, as a real Sociedad fan. Golazo. Somebody scored there. Is somebody playing? Are they playing? Britannico? What? Yeah, it's Manchester it, between yeah, the uh, Britannico and Ithia. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, react, play play now. Yes. Okay. So this is literally what is happening now in the Basque country. As you'll see these um, words moving around and getting bigger as more and more people talk about them. That's what that's saying. It's not just individual um, things. But this is like... This is like uh, the flock of birds. These are just tweets popping around and this all over the place, different terms, some of them becoming trends, some of them not trends. This is like the flock of birds. <coughs> Sorry. So we have to, um, excuse me. So in order to take this, we have to understand how, how the whole flock works. <coughs> Okay, it's like the flock of birds. This is a thing, as Angel was just saying, this is the thing that we do for the Basque government. And the Basque government use this. So they've got this kind of, they've got this, it's like customer insight. This is their customer insight. They've got this kind of temperature check of how people are feeling about things. And they've got alerts that fire off if certain trends come up and things like that. So they use this for customer insight. But they don't know what people are going to talk about. They're not listening for any key word because they have no idea what words people are going to use. Can you switch to the... Yeah, you have to switch to the... Um, <laughs> no. Yep, the, the bottom one, full screen. This is just a quick thing just to show you how tweets propagate. Just before you hit play, wait a second, Angel. Sorry, I'm going to cough again. 
This is just a quick thing. This just shows you how tweets can propagate around the world. This was when there was a tsunami in Japan last year. All this shows you is tweets coming out of Japan at that moment, nothing else. And the, what I'm trying to illustrate with this is, what I'm trying to illustrate with this is look how it just fills up the globe and you quite, what starts off as a very linear line, tweets pouring out of Japan, just fills the globe. And immediately it just becomes this big kind of flock of tweets. Okay? Go back to this presentation. Yeah. Should I play Posh? Yeah, yes, because that's the other one, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So in order to actually understand, if you, when we were looking at that thing of the, of, the, of the Basque country, we're seeing all these tweets, clouds of tweets coming up like this. We're looking at that as a flock. In order to actually know, be able to predict the future, what people are going to talk about, what the trends are, and things like that, what we need to do is not read them all semantically. Look at each tweet in a linear fashion and say, what are they talking about? Are they in favor or negative? Are they positive this? What are this? We don't look for things like that. We don't look for hashtags. Hashtags are quite a late thing. They're quite a reactive thing. We don't look for that. We don't look for particular keywords because we have no idea what people are going to say. We don't know what people are going to talk about. We don't know what's going to happen. When a plane landed on the Hudson, I don't know if you remember this in New York, the picture of the plane in the Hudson. The plane landed on the Hudson a couple of years ago. Nobody knew that was going to happen. You couldn't have been listening for that. You couldn't have predicted that was going to happen. So you don't know how you're going to predict it. So here's an example. This was in the Basque country. I'm going to cough again. <coughs> I should turn the microphone off before coughing, sorry. This is in the Basque country um, again. But this was just before ETA announced the ceasefire. Now, see if you can see at what point we can tell what's going to happen. We can predict what's going to happen. Can you just press play just for a couple of seconds? Can everyone see okay the, the words? Can everyone read them? Everyone's got better eyesight than I have then. All right, just stop it a second there, Ankel. Sorry. At the top here, there, that bar, can you see the time bar? Mm -hmm. they, they actually announce it around here, okay? So, okay, so that's what you need to watch for. Ahead of that time, what can we see? Yeah. Carry on. You start it again, then if it's not. I'll go to the live one. Yes, this is the YouTube. The yep. Yeah, you did, you set it up. I think so. Okay, so this is a recording from when this actually happened. Um, I don't think I can teach playing this. I can do it manually. All right, okay. But people here, you see, funnily enough, everyone's talking about Gaddafi. This is, um, this is the, the ETA in here before the announcement. Here. You see it here. And can you, can you go back a little bit? Yeah. Do you remember there was the bit about the yes. preparing? It's, if you can see it. There, there, look, there. Just at Vittoria, if you look where Vittoria is, and also in Bilbao. Like they were tweeting, this was an hour before. And that was also, you can't see it on this map unfortunately, but it was also in, in um, San Sebastian area as well. That you see that, and that's quite an unusual thing to tweet. That they're um, rehearsing for the thing. And then, only a few seconds, you see Etta's everywhere suddenly. And this is still before the announcement. Now, we have two bits of information there which are quite unusual. Suddenly, people are tweeting about um, practicing for a, a, a communication, and then suddenly, etta, 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 quite unusually propagating. Now, you can make a prediction there. You might not be right to tie those two bits of data together, 
And now it's easy for us to tie those two bits of data together, but you can make a prediction there. There are two unusual things propagating. And then about so 20 minutes, half an hour later, they made their announcement. And then it became a hashtag, what, about an hour later? Yeah, hashtag was like 40 something minutes. 40 minutes later, it became a hashtag. But we were able to predict it before time by pulling together two unusual propagations. Because we're looking at the probability, if you suddenly see a word that's propagated, unusually so, it may be only four, five, six times, not much, but if it's unusual, and compared to the same week, the week before or the day before, it's unusual, this propagation, it flashes up as saying, here's something unusual going on here. It doesn't need to trend. It doesn't need to become a hashtag. Yeah. Okay. Back to the presentation? Or? Yeah, back to the presentation. Okay. So... That's how we think we can use this technology for actually anticipation. We're going to go on to just show you a couple of examples of how we're actually using it um, already. This is what's what we call a cluster sphere. Have you got the real one there? Yeah. Yep. This is what we call a, cl um, a cluster sphere. It's a sphere of clusters of tweets. So now we've pulled the flock of tweets into different clusters about what people are talking about. Here you can see the yellow ones are actually users and the white ones are tweets. Okay? And you can see them pulling into groups. Can you just take the users off? And put the tweets back on, that's it. So you can see them pulling into tweets here. So, for example, up here, this area up here, is about people tweeting about technology. And down here, people are tweeting about, this is mainly um, athletic Bilbao and sport. Um, over here is politics, over to the right. This area over here. So you can see what people are tweeting about, what they actually care about. Can you put the author on? The one that, Which one you know, the, yeah, yeah. The tweets from the Basque country. It's a, yeah. it's a moment in time in the Basque country. Like everything that's been said in that moment in time. I can look for it. <coughs> what you'll see with this, um, this particular agency all their tweets are over here. You can actually zoom in as far as reading each individual tweet. But what you can actually see here is you can see that oh, they're over here. <coughs> they're talking about over here. And what you could do is you could apply this and you could say, well, actually, all the people I'm trying to talk to are over, oh, I can't see this again, are in the green bit. But they're also maybe over here as well in this bit. So maybe I want to put my communications and marketing over there. So there's quite a lot you can do with understanding how people are communicating what they're talking about. That's just one application that we've got. Okay. Going back to La Both de Galicia, do you remember the graph that we had before from La Both de Galicia? Well, what we did is we pulled that into a bit more useful information here. Sorry, Ankel, you're going back to the, <laughs> to the other one again, to La Both. What you'll see on this one is this is actually no the um, no the uh, you need to go the to the page. yeah the, the non okay the web page. Bretzi is nice to some extent. Yeah. <laughs> no, the other the, the one oh, the, the dynamic one. The map. Oh, the Basque Country or the no no the Galicia. Okay, this one. the elections. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Right. Now what you'll see here is this was the, the, the tweets that have been mentioned around Galicia on the day of the election and mentioned. And you'll see here like a thermometer, which is tracking the notoriety of that. So you can see Pepe and Pesue. This thing's going up a bit there. BNG, Esquerra Unida. So this was the day of the elections, what people were tweeting about. Can everyone see the thermometer on the left? And that's it. That's the end of the day. And this was the election result we predicted here on the left. Pepe winning, Pepe away, like in the, with these proportions. And the actual Escaños uh, seats are, are just here, look, for each region. And the prediction was more or less perfect. So 
Sorry, yes, please. <laughs> That's another application of it. Back to the Basque country. So this is showing us the, the different tendencies, okay. trends. So you want to, okay. Yeah. So that should be. So here we go. This is back to the Basque country. And this is, again, looking at predicting the future. On the right-hand side here, we've got opportunity here where we can pre predict what we think will, will trend. This is not stuff which is trending yet. This is stuff which we think will trend here on the right-hand side. So this is based on these propagations that I was telling you about. The probability, looking at probability, comparing to the past, what we think is going to trend up there on the right where Angel's showing with the mouse. And that's, this is based on live data that's actually happening now. Is that candidates to, to have an impact here? Yeah, that's what we think will have an impact. Okay. So. We go to the next. So this is all very interesting, but what we're interested in at Colbinson is looking at ways that we can actually maximize online sales for e-commerce or maximize customer satisfaction or help customers get access to information and answers to questions, you know, help people find stuff and help e-commerce retailers to sell stuff. Mainly we work with search engines and we know that 71% of online shoppers will use the search engine. So that's where we're thinking of applying it in our situation is we want to apply it at the search engine level. Because we know that about 85% of searches don't find what the user is looking for and 80% of visitors will abandon this, the page if the, uh, if the search engine is poor. So bearing in mind what we were saying about that quantity of data that we've got and how we can use that and build that into understanding, probability, etc to actually predict future demand. And bearing in mind the opportunity this presents of people that are walking away from online stores, that's where we think we can apply this. We can apply this, actually let's just show the next slide first of all. This is the number of tweets by, for a Kate Morton book, just over a week. We just, what's it, Kate Morton? Kate Morton. Okay. Kate Morton, a writer, Kate Morton. She was um, a top selling writer at the Casa del Libro, is a, a client of ours. The Casa del Libro site, it was one of the 2011 top sellings. We just picked a week at random. This was the number of tweets about mentioning Kate Morton in a, in a week, one particular week. What we're going to do in the next slide maps on there how many times Kate Morton was searched for within the search engine of Casa del Libro. Okay? So a perfect correlation. The number of times that she was being tweeted about perfectly translated to the number of times that got searched about in the search engine. So having that information there to anticipate it can be used in lots of different ways. For example, one way that we're looking at using it is what we call social order. If you see one person is being tweeted about a lot, like you can see here that the number of tweets is jumping up, that person when you search Morton or Kate will come out the top of the list. The items at the top of the list always sell more. And you know that person, there's demand here. You're anticipating that demand, you can put that person at the top of the list. Another way you could use it is you can talk about social buzz. A lot of people are talking about this, so you can make a special promotion about that person, you can put that on your front page, you can put those books on, on there. You can engage. You can actually reply to these tweets and say, hey, if you're thinking of buying this book, here's a link to it on our website. You can post on your Facebook. There's a lot of talk about Kate Morton. Come and see her at Casa del Libro. There's lots of ways you can use this information. You could also use it to catch mistakes, something that happens a lot with names. We get this a lot with Ken Follett, is the example we always use, that people mistype the name Kent Follett. But actually, you can see that from Twitter. If everyone's talking about Ken Follett and they're only putting one L, or they're putting Kent with a T, Kent Follett, that's incorrect. 
but you need to know that. So if you're seeing there's a lot of these kind of incorrect names coming up, you need to make sure you have that synonym in your catalog. So if somebody types it wrong, they still get the right information. You can find this out from Twitter. It's all in there. You can predict it all. And you can predict things like unusual relationships. Like we, um, the, the, the bank BBK and Radiohead. A lot of people were searching for Radiohead there because they were promoting a concert in Bilbao. But unless you've made that connection, between, which is not a natural connection, you're going to miss all of that traffic. Kate Moss and Mango. Kate Moss, a lot of people search Mango for Kate Moss. Unless you've made that connection that they're talking about the product that she's advertising, you're losing that traffic. And as we saw in the graphic before, if your search engine isn't giving people what they want, they'll just go somewhere else. It's very easy to do. Very, very easy to do. So what we're trying to do with all of this is we're trying to get better at understanding people. The same way if you go into a shop in the street, you walk into a shop and you say to the people, hey, can I have um, a pair of black boots, please? And the person just says, nah. It doesn't happen, does it? If it's a shoe shop and you've got boots, even if you haven't got black boots, that person will help you. A search engine won't. It will just go, nah. Sorry. And if you type boots and they've got it in there as boot, they'll just go, nah. We don't treat people like that in the street. We don't treat people like that in the shops. And yet we have, we have um, e-commerce, which is the fastest growing retail sector, treating customers like that, saying to them, nah, we haven't got that, no. So what we're trying to do is get more empathetic. We're trying to make the search engines, which is the way most serious buyers interact with e-commerce, we're trying to make them more empathetic, more like people, more like dealing with a good salesperson. So we're trying to move from B to C to this B loves C thing. And as Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs there says, is you can't just react, you've got to anticipate. I'm just reacting to you looking at me. I should have anticipated. So what's the value of what this? This is the question we started with. What's the value? We said, most people are using Twitter down here. They're just communicating. They're like that grandma with the email, but they're printing it off. Some people are getting quite clever and engaging and trying to engage with their customers and build relationships. They're here. We think we can actually get to the point where we're anticipating, where we're predicting the future and we're building customer insight to make more empathetic solutions. That's what we think the challenge is. But everybody will have a different challenge. You're all in different businesses. That's how we apply it because we're mainly focused on e-commerce and other sectors where people are trying to find stuff. But every one of you will have your own way that you can use these ideas and use this technology to apply to your businesses. But that's the challenge you have to move from here to up here. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I find it very interesting. Eh, ahora vamos a empezar con el turno de preguntas, de manera que eh, el primero que se anime me acerco en un momentito, le, le dejo el micrófono y a partir de ahí nos vamos pasando el micrófono unos a otros. Recordar que hasta que no nos llegue el micrófono, a lo mejor nosotros sí que nos oímos, pero el streaming que estamos realizando a internet no nos va a oír. Así que me muevo para allá, que ya tenemos una primera pregunta. Un segundito. Buenas tardes. Hi. Buenas tardes. Eh, sí, he visto que vives en Madrid eh, como buena documentalista ya de rastreado y bueno ya te he localizado. <laughs> Do you understand me? Uh, not very well. Uh, no. Okay. No, muy bien. Yeah, she is a documentalist and have seen that you live in Madrid, so he have uh, looked for your information and have uh, realized where. All the information about you, uh, he has okay. already, <laughs> already found it. Hope he didn't find it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I speak in Spanish, and uh, please, uh, you, trans trans you translate. Uh, creo que ustedes están utilizando una herramienta semántica. Uh, ¿Cuál es? 
Y luego después eh, quería saber si sus KPIs son eh, estratégicos, eh, cuantitativos o cualitativos, porque lo que he visto hasta ahora es más bien eh, cuantitativos. Eh, en, en un futuro, eh, aparte de saber... Eh, podrán saber, o sea, eh, aparte de saber lo que, lo que quiere el, bueno, pues el, el customer, podrán saber lo que siente, gracias. Porque eso es la clave. Ok, gracias. ¿Has entendido? Sí, sí, lo entiendo. ¿Cómo te llamas? María. María, gracias, María. Puedes um, probablemente responder eso mejor que yo puedo, creo. Me gustaría. Go on then. María, la pregunta es muy, muy buena. Es súper buena. Eh, has preguntado primero que, bueno, que si, que si es de Madrid. Tal. La pregunta era eh, que si hay una tecnología semántica detrás. Herramienta detrás, semántica, sí. Sí, es muy buena la pregunta porque, y siento que sea evidente en apariencia porque no es el caso, huimos y salimos corriendo de todo lo que tiene que ver con semántica. Lexicología e interpretación del idioma como las palabras y su sentido desde el punto de vista semántico, lexicológico. Y por una sencilla razón, queremos anticipar el futuro y desconocemos el futuro. No sabemos que un avión va a amerizar en el Hudson River, ni sabemos que una ola va a tirar una, una central nuclear. Son cosas que no podemos saber con, eh, de forma antes, no sabemos que se va a morir fraga. Eh, son cosas que no podemos tener palabras clave para todo. Entonces tenemos que analizar cómo se propagan los acontecimientos en el tiempo y en el espacio. Y esto es matemáticas. Y de esta manera sí podemos anticipar y hacer un cálculo. La segunda pregunta que haces es sobre el, el sentimiento. ¿no? Que... So, uh, uh, anyway, for the, for the streaming, uh, para el streaming está preguntando sobre, sobre si la cuantitativa y la cualitativa y creo que comentas tú sobre Yeah, empatía. I was just going to say the, the, the idea is when we say the empathy project, what we're meaning is we believe that this can give you customer insight and it can help you build knowledge and understanding so that you can anticipate customers, so that you can build empathy into how you deliver to your customers. That's what it's talking about. It's not saying that if one person tweets a negative tweet, you empathize with that individual. It's more like if you, the, the, the example that Angel uses is if you go into a bookshop and you say, um, have you got any books by Cohen? Tienes un libro de Cohen? If you talk to a human being, if you go into the Casa del Libro or another bookshop and you ask a person that question, the person will know that you probably want Leonard Cohen. Leonard. To tra translate Leonard Cohen, yeah. Leonardo. <laughs> they, will probably, they will know because they're a human being and they will empathize with you. And they know that Leo Leonard Cohen, Leonard Cohen, laughing Len, as we call him, well, they know that he won the, the Prince of Astorias prize. So they know that that's in the, their mind. They have that knowledge and they understand you. You go to a, um, a search engine, there's no empathy. They put, you put Cohen in there, and maybe you get a film by the Cohen brothers, maybe you get something by Dan Cohen, maybe you get something completely different. You go in there and put King, maybe you're not going to get the latest Stephen King, who perhaps was just on TV a couple of days ago. Maybe you're going to get a biography about King George or, you know, Alfonso XIII or something, because there's no empathy. You deal with a, a search engine, there is no empathy. It's dealing with a machine. What we want to do is make that experience much more human, much more like a, you're talking to a person. A, a, a search engine is like a good salesperson. A good salesperson, if you go into a shop and you say, I want coin, they will say, look, here's Leonard Cohen. Here's the latest thing. This is what everybody's buying. This is the interest. They will give you that human service. With e-commerce being the biggest growth sector in retail, and one of the very few sectors that's growing at all, 
We can't afford to lose this. We need to make these, the, the search engine a much more empathetic experience. And the way we do that is using the data that we can get from looking at social media. So we are looking at the flock of birds. We're looking which way is the flock going. We're not tracking any individual bird and empathizing with an individual bird. No. We're looking at the flock. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Me voy primero a este lado, luego movemos para allá. Thank you and good evening. A uh, little bit about the stock market, uh, because it looks to me uh, what you are talking about, predicting the future, uh, is a stock market, basically, and uh, making lots of money if you can predict uh, what, uh, what direction the stocks are moving in two minutes. But uh, uh, so first question is, what's happening around there uh, with these techniques in the stock markets? Is any kind of uh, uh, business case, case study, what the investment banks are doing? regarding this, and a second, second kind of question is like, you're assuming all the time, uh, if you are not caring that much about qualitative data, more quantitative somehow, more mathematics, you're assuming all the, ta uh, all the time uh, there is only one direction. Uh, I mean, if you, if you talk a lot about the stock, it can be any direction, basically. Mm. People can talk about the stock because it's falling down or wherever. So how can you distinguish somehow or, 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 or what people are using or what you think about? That's okay. my two questions. Thank you. That's a, a, a good question. So what was your name? Uh, my name is David Gomez. David. Um, yeah, thanks for the question. First of all, about the stock market. Um, yes, there are, there are quite a few companies working exactly this, looking at using social media data to see if, how if they can use that to predict the future. There is one that I follow on Twitter, and I'm, I don't have the name now, but if you tweet me or something, I will, I will send you the link. Um, but yeah, there, there is, sorry? Recorded future, maybe? No, it, it isn't that, but there is also recorded future as well, recorded future. So yeah, there's quite a lot of investigation going into, into that. And there's quite a few companies looking at other things, like I mentioned before about elections. And they're looking at much more, because it's political, they have to look at the semantics. They have to look at, do you mean good or bad? They have to look more at that level. Um, so yes, there are, is the quick answer to that. Um, the second part of your question was, if you're looking at just the big picture, you're only going in one direction? Is that correct? Well, it, 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 I think you made an assumption of saying, well, 80% 80, 80 of the tweets and 88% mm. in the UK So basically, you are in, in the quantitative thing. It's like you are looking one direction. If people talk about my company, they are talking well about my company. That's fine, fair enough. But in the stock market, in, or in, in, in win or, or, or lost possibilities, mm. maybe there are two directions. It's, it's like you, you don't know. You mm. need to, to look inside. I think. I don't know. It's, it's just. A, it's a, it's a very good point. It's a very good question. I think one, one thing to say, um, I think Ankle will be able to answer the question better than I can, but just one point quickly is we're not saying there isn't value in looking at individual tweets. It's just that's not what we're doing. I know that there are some very, very proactive companies that do a really lot of work looking at individual tweets and predicting whether individuals are about to lose, come off their contract or something like that, bearing in mind the, the, the individual... That's great work, that's fantastic. It's just not what we're talking about. So I'm not saying that looking at the individual linear semant, I'm not saying that doesn't have value. It's just not what we're talking about here. Um, but your other point's a good point. Do you want to take that? Yeah, we moved away from that field of the semantic understanding of the uh, qualitative interpretation of a micro message. Uh, there is a good tweet which says, my Blackberry is like my wife and my iPhone. <laughs> He's like my lover, yeah? That's very difficult to interpret semantically. Yeah. <laughs> Yendo al, a la cuestión de la, canti, la, la aplicación en el stock market, hay mucho trabajo muy fuerte en esto. Y al final es un trabajo que combina el cálculo de probabilidad de un acontecimiento que puede afectar al interés o al conocimiento de una marca que cotiza en bolsa 
combina esto con la capacidad intelectual de un broker o de un ingeniero en el área en el cual sucede el acontecimiento. Por poneros una, un ejemplo muy reciente, LCC, que es el nombre de, de Carnival Corporation, que fue los que se, les, se, se ¿cómo se llama el barco? Costa Concordia. ¿no? ¿Sucedió a qué hora, os acordáis? A las... Diez, creo que a las 9 y 40 o algo así, hora de Italia, que son las 3 y 40 hora de Nueva York, que cotizaban en bolsa. Hasta ese, ese día nadie recibió, ningún broker recibió por Reuters ni por Moreover, nada, ninguna información de que había pasado esto con esta compañía que tenía un barco que cotiza en 1.600 millones de dólares, creo que es, y no se recibió nada. Hay un caso ahí donde se supone que si esa foto, primera foto, que creo que es de las 9.50 y algo, que ya puede ver una persona, no lo puede hacer un sistema, y cal, cal, calcular cualitativamente eh, eh, que esa foto tiene una interpretación eh, negativa para la marca, ¿no? Eh, eh, gente sali saliéndose con los barcos, con las barcas salvavidas y demás, pues eso se considera que hubiera sido una buena, quien hubiera tenido ese poder, ese conocimiento, hubiera podido tomar algunas acciones muy buenas en bolsa con el ECC, ¿no? Pero ya es una persona quien aporta el intelecto para interpretarlo cu cualitativamente. El, el US Service que amerizó en el Hudson River, creo que fue el 4 de octubre o algo así, del 2009, el primer tuit es de las 8 y 11, 8 y 12 y, y tardó 30 y pico minutos en llegar al Wall Street Journal. Y, Ahí ese día la, el stock de, de, de US Airways subió un 12% y volvió a bajar al día siguiente donde estaba. Eh, se considera que era positivo para la marca, pero no había ningún software que pueda interpretar esto. La calidad del concepto tuvo que venir alguien y dice, esto es bueno, que haya un avión con un logo amerizado y con la gente posada sobre las alas es positivo para US Airways. No hay software que pueda hacer esta interpretación, pero sí decirte dónde mirar. Es un poco la combinación del intelecto con el procesado automático. Hello, uh, my name is Antonio. I wanted Hi. to ask you if you have tried to predict successfully any elections uh, with that, that you have, you, uh, which you have obtained better results than with common surveys or uh, with other uh, systems like bet systems. Um, well, the one we showed you was the, uh, the Galicia election. That we got pretty close. But I mean, it was real time. It was as the election was taking place. It wasn't weeks before. Um, with the recent Spanish general elections, there were some newspapers which had twitometer, was it called? Twitometer? There was a, a twitometer. And there again, all they were doing was just counting the numbers of tweets and nothing really more complicated than that. And what that showed you very clearly was Pepe were way ahead, Pese were, Pese were, way, were way down, and UPD and Izquierda Unida were way up. To that degree, it didn't give you a percentage. But what, um, what people have been doing in the US where they're really getting into this is there are some companies there that are predicting trends. They're predicting, they predicted Rick Santorum would win Iowa. They predicted his win. They predicted Gingrich would win South Carolina. So it is happening. We haven't done that, but it does happen. There are people doing that. It's complicated. It's not as simple as saying one tweet is one unit of popularity. There is. There are lots of people that just send out hundreds of tweets. Um, there are lots of people that are sending out jokes about candidates. Most tweets about politics, if you just do a search for Mitt Romney in a simple Twitter search for Romney, out of 20 or 30, something like 80% are negative. And the positive ones are usually sent by him. <laughs> you know, it's quite difficult. But then some people are just firing them out. Some people are just all day just going on about it. It's a very difficult thing. You have to pull together a lot of different factors. So the quick answer is, um, yes, that is being done in the US, but it's early days. It's not proven yet to be more accurate than a, an opinion poll yet. But they have been able to predict unusual swings in support. ¿Alguna pregunta más? Un segundito que me acerco para allá para que te puedan escuchar. It's just to follow up, really, because I know that nowadays you can actually flag certain words, and I think that that's a good way of predicting uh, whether it's positive or negative or how it works. But I think that's um, yeah. There's, there is a lot of work and people looking at the semantics and, yeah. and looking at the, you know, if you say, for example, um, I don't know, Rajoy, I, I put it in English. If I, I think David Cameron is wicked, 
Does everyone know what the word wicked means? Yeah. What? Malvado. What? Malvado. Sorry? Malvado. And it means very good as well. Yeah, it has both. It means very bad and very good. If you're, it, 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 it kind of depends how old you are. If you're under 25, wicked means really good. Right. If you're over 25, it means wicked. Really. But how do you know? If somebody says David Cameron is wicked, what does that mean? Well, you Bad. can actually target as well the, uh, the audience, right? You can both target the audience and flag the... Very good for reacting, but not for being proactive. Very good for reacting. Right. It's, al it's also, I mean, it's, it, th there is the problems of words like wicked, which have two meanings, or bad. The word bad in English can mean good. Does everyone remember that Michael Jackson had an album called Bad in the 80s? Because bad meant good. And if you write, um, if you write Rajoy, what is it? Bad Rajoy, good Rubalcaba, who are you talking about with that good in the middle? You know, you know, I know, but does a machine know? There's, it, it's very complicated and very error prone, and the, the language is very. But there are people using it and working out which words have been terms have been used together. There, there is work going on about that. It, it's, but it's, it's very, very difficult. We, we are not, we are not professionally interested in predicting election results. It's fun. But it's not what our jobs. No, but even for brands, like let's say a brand doesn't want to be associated with the word emergency but, or bad or pretty much a negative term, right? I mean, but that, that's, that, that, that's, that's exactly right. It's, 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 it's more about when people are talking about brands or products. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing so far is that 80 to 90% of tweets that are related to a brand or a product mm -hmm. are recommending they're positive mm -hmm. in some way. And if you already know that, how much work do you want to put in? To finding out of, of tuning it even better, if you already know it's eighty ninety percent. Yeah, but in terms of predictions, what we were talking mm. about, it would be, I mean, a good way of having like red flags for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as Ankel said, that that's that's reacting, not proacting, which again is really good. That's not criticizing. That's really that that's very positive. A lot of companies do monitor social media to get an understanding of what people are saying about their products and and their brands, and that's that's you know very 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 valuable work. Absolutely. It's just not, it's not exactly the same as we're talking about here. But I think like even, sorry, I don't want to monopolize it, but even as a reaction, like um, without, without responding to something, like you predicting that something might happen. Sorry, just predicting that something might happen, um, people were still using certain words that should be red flags for companies, then that's a way of utilizing it in a different manner. So. Yeah, as well. No, that's, that's a good point. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Thank you. Hi, going back to the e-commerce, uh, how long or how much time do brands will have in order to react uh, based uh, with your predictions? That's, that's a good question. It, it depends on the nature of the product. Usually it's not much time at all. Um, with the example we showed you before about the Kate Morton book, because popular culture items like books and music sell very quickly in high numbers, you're only talking about minutes to hours. In some cases, it's no more than that. Right, but in that case, actually, the time to respond for a brand, and correct me if I'm wrong, for the e-commerce, they will not be able to do the actions in order to increase sales in those two hours. Well, well you would, because it, it, be, it would be automated. That you would automatically hear a catalog item. You would, you would have your catalog crossed with social media data. And you have a continual, this is, this is the, the, the tool that we have called social links. You have your catalog items and you cross it with social media data. So every item has an, a, a notoriety measure. And as those go up, those are the items that get put to the tops of the list or come out on the front page as special promoted items. And everything's done or maybe online. those are the things that lead your, lead your advertising. Maybe if you're advertising on Facebook or Google or something, mm. maybe those are the ones, those are the links that you shove into those ads because you know that only, only 10 seconds ago, it could happen like this, only 10 seconds ago, you saw an unusual propagation mm -hmm. of a book. So that's suddenly coming out as your Google ad and your Facebook ad. And that can be done automatically. That can be done automatically, yeah. yeah. Okay. There are other items, of course, which that wouldn't happen. If everyone's talking about the latest Audi, clearly you're not going to suddenly yeah. go out and buy a 100 Audis. So, depending on the size of the purchase and the relationship. If it's very transactional, like buying a book, it's very short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although you, you, don't need a, you don't need software to predict 
demand for iPod on the day that, you know. It's like, how do you predict umbrella demand? Well, you don't need a computer to tell you it's raining. Um, but yeah, if it's something very transactional like a book, then it's pretty quick. If it's not transactional, if it's a much longer relationship or a more difficult, more complicated purchase like a car or something like a bank account, where you're probably going to have a relationship for several years, then clearly there's a much longer time period between a notoriety or a demand and a response. And then there's other things where there's very, very little relationship at all. If you're buying online, um, I don't know, a chair, like people don't tweet about chairs really. So that's not something I that's think going to work. There's a lot of e-commerce market for chairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a big market, but you know. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Gracias. No sé si tenéis alguna otra pregunta por aquí. Me animo yo con una. Sure. En, en, en español. Yo no, no me voy okay. a atrever a. Sobre todo porque lo que quiero preguntar, no sé si. si lo intentamos a media, sino en, en inglés y en español. Um, yo que me dedico a hacer este análisis de social media y mucho de sentiment y mucho de marcas, muchas veces sucede que el volumen de resultados de menciones a una marca es muy pequeño. Y la marca dice, oh, there's no value. Uh, no, no quiero dedicar recursos para analizar 200, 500, a veces mil, dos mil menciones es pequeño para, para según qué marcas. Lo que vosotros estáis haciendo es no buscar menciones necesariamente a la marca, es buscar de qué está hablando la gente para que si la marca tiene algo que decir pueda prepararse para contar algo que tiene que ver con su marca. Eh, yo vendo el libro o yo eh, doy viajes en, en barco o yo... Eh, soy un diario deportivo eh, y entonces yo tengo algo que añadir a esa conversación. Proponéis no obsesionarse con el sentiment, no eh, contar menciones, sino ver la dinámica, ver la evolución, ver la relación. ¿no? Mm. Eh, ¿Hay más valor en eso entonces? It, it, ¿Qué, it's, it's, una, una pregunta, sorry. ¿qué es el sentiment? Uh, sé, lo, sé lo que es, pero ¿qué, ¿qué crees que es el sentiment? ¿Qué es? Bueno, es intentar mediante un sistema informático eh, interpretar el significado de un conjunto de caracteres ¿no? y cuál es la carga emocional que alguien ha puesto a la hora de utilizar ese lenguaje y no otro. ¿no? Algo que funciona, es muy complicado ¿no? de, de, de interpretar. ¿no? Es que ese es, es el problema. Sentiment es la mala traducción que hacemos al español. Es, es, es sentiment no es sentimiento. Sentiment es latín, sentimentum, no es, es sentido. Y, y en España tenemos un grave problema con esto, porque pensamos y nos confundimos completamente. El sentimiento es otra cuestión. El sentimiento de un texto jamás se verá interpretable. El sentimiento, podéis leer un email de 200 millones de maneras distintas con 200 sentimientos distintos. ¿no? Ese sentiment es valoración negativa, positiva o neutra, es lo que se define, ¿no? Y haciendo esa apreciación que no puedo dejarla pasar, ¿no? Pero vuelve, vuelve tú con esto. Oh, I've got the microphone. Sí, yeah, it's okay. Um, no, no, you're, you're right. In what you're saying is that we don't, um, with this project, what we, we are not getting deep into the sentiment about things. That's true. We are looking at the flock of birds, not the individual birds. It's, it's, it's a different thing, as I said before, um, to, to your question. It is, it is a different issue. When you're trying to predict the future, trying to predict future demand, you're trying to anticipate what people are talking about. Um, the value that we've found is not listening for a particular term, not listening for a particular brand. It's just, what are people saying? And is there anything unusual about the way they're propagating in time and space? Yes, there is. Hang on, what's happening here? You know, why are people suddenly talking about an announcement and the word ETA together? Why are people suddenly talking about planes in the Hudson? We didn't predict that. We didn't know it was going to happen. Um, so those are, that's the way we use it, to try and predict what's going to happen in the future based on those, um, not by looking at a particular brand and monitoring what people are saying about it. 
as I said before, not that that isn't valuable work. That is valuable work. It's just not this work. That's all. And you can use it to um, any uh, business uh, situation. You can use it to uh, inform your um, TV advertising, for example, because you understand yeah, yeah. Your, your customer. I mean, that's the challenge to you and, and, and everybody here is you've all got to use it differently. Newspapers use it to drive their ticker tape at the top. What are the news stories people are talking about? What links from my newspaper are people tweeting? That drives the ticker, the news ticker across the top. And sometimes it will even drive the editorial of how they arrange the page and what news things they promote. If you know one of your stock catalog items is being talked about all over Twitter, you'd be a fool not to put that in your advertising immediately, to get that immediately into Google. So that when people type in those words, that pops out the top of Google. Or suddenly, if people are saying, like, if Julia Roberts is seen on TV wearing hunter boots, suddenly people are going, oh, what boots are those? Julia Roberts hunter boots. If you stock those boots, you need to have the word Julia Roberts in your catalog so that when they do that, your page comes out the top. Otherwise, you've lost a sale. So making that unusual relationship, you cannot predict that and listen for it. It's impossible. So you've got to suddenly see, hang on, unusual propagation, right. There's my action. I've got that information. Take that action, and there you go. You capture the traffic. You can't predict that. But everybody will apply it differently. That was an example from newspaper, an example from e-commerce. Television advertising is a great example. Um, but everybody's challenge is different. How can you apply this? How can you use it? Okay. Alguna pregunta más? Ninguna. Perfecto, pues. I have a question. Okay. Where, where's, where's the free beer? <laughs> where's the free beer? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, near here. <laughs> right. Uh, efectivamente. Damos por concluido entonces el, el Open Day. Eh, darte las gracias a ti, John, de nuevo, por eh, esta estupenda presentación que nos habéis hecho. Eh, os invito a vosotros a que si queréis plantear un tema, o que si conocéis a un ponente, o si queréis que algún tema que os interesa y está relacionado con la analítica, con el marketing online y queréis que lo traigamos, pues somos bastantes las personas que al final estamos un poco colaborando con esta idea, aunque nos toque ser un poco más visibles tanto a Sergio como a mí. Nos mandáis un email, nos dejáis un mensaje en Twitter o ahora cuando estemos con la cerveza gratis nos lo comentáis y estaremos encantados de buscarle hueco o de eh, ponernos en contacto con la persona o quizá uno de vosotros que quiere venirnos a contar alguno de estos casos en, en un próximo evento. Muchísimas gracias, John. Thank y you, ahora Maria. sí, eh, vamos a por la cerveza gratis.